the excitement of a brand new trick. I've got my Buddha papers and they say you can use an object to conjure up other objects. So I'm going to take my 20 peso coin, see what I can get. have them folded up. I will use my magic ruler to pray to the gods of the office store. Office supply gods, give me something good. You can feel the excitement in the air. New tricks are always so much fun. Paperclip. I got scammed again. Welcome to the world of magic. We are going to show you how to craft this. It does not take all of those. But first, I want to show you the gimmick and a quick handling. The gimmick is the two red papers are glued together. And then there's a yellow paper inside each of the reds. So when you build this, you close up the yellow, fold it up, fold up the red, flip it over, and then when you open it, you're in a different red paper and a different yellow paper. I'll show you that flip I do because I like that. I've seen different handlings of this where they pick them up and wave them around. That was just a quick demo. Here, I'll show you the whole way through. Put something in, fold up the yellow. Now watch as I fold the red. Instead of folding all four sides, I get to this point. I just flip the packet over and immediately fold up the next page and nobody really notices what you're doing. You're just folding paper. The two red packets are glued back to back. So when you flip it over and open it, you're in a different yellow paper. So you can have things appear, disappear, or change. I've seen people pick up each one, like fold the yellow, wave it around, set it down, fold the red, wave it around, set it down, flipped over. And that, to me, that's just more complicated. I like this just flipping over. The crafting is easy. It's just looks like four pieces of paper, but it is six. Each one is cut a little bit smaller than the other. I'm doing two centimeters, which is about three quarters of an inch. If I were making another one, I would go three centimeters, which is about an inch and a quarter. It really doesn't matter too much. It's just however you want it to look. But you want to be consistent on the cutting, so when you fold it up, the little pockets that they go into work. So I will be cutting two centimeters off each paper. There's six pieces of paper, one blue, one pink, two red, two yellow. You can, of course, use any colors you want. The blue is left full size. The pink we will cut two centimeters off the length and the width. I like this cutting board because I can line up the edges very well. I can see top and bottom, both sides are lined up in that corner. You can draw a line, cut it with scissors, but I get a straighter line with a knife. So if you got a good straight edge, run that knife down it two centimeters off and it's a clean cut. I can't cut that straight with scissors. Rotate it, cut the side. You cut one side of the length, one side of the width. As I said, you can do two centimeters, three centimeters. That's like three quarters of an inch, inch and a quarter, kind of however much you want to do it. This board is set up in centimeters, so that is what I am using. It's really the same. The blue and the pink, there's a single page, the red and the yellow, there are two. I cut them together and later I will fold them together to make sure they are the same. This is actually a very easy thing to craft. You've probably already seen all you need to see, but we will continue it. Some of it will be in uh, time lapse to make it faster. But I want to talk about the Buddha papers because I just it's an interesting little trick. It's ancient. And I mean, when I say ancient, it's old. 
The earliest I have seen is in a book from London from 1722. But the whole art of legermain or hocus pocus in perfection is the name of the book by Harry Dean. There are no pictures of the trick in this book, but they talk about the papers being glued back to back. And then they go on and they talk a little about witchcraft, but there's no pictures and no name. But the book is available on Project Gutenberg for free. Link will be on my blog post in the description. Yes, here I'm doing the red pieces. Make sure they are squared up perfectly. So you got to, as you line it up on your sides, don't let them slide apart. So you got to be a little more careful with this one. And you cut two centimeters off the first one. So you cut four centimeters off the second one. You'll cut six centimeters off the third one. And then it just, it's a simple progression. You can do it inches, centimeters, however you want to do it. It all works. I have no idea where the name Buddha Papers comes from. You would think in today's culture that might be um, insensitive, but it has been called Buddha Papers as early as the 1930s. There are catalogs offering Buddha Papers, but it's been also called the Witched Paper, Buddha Money Mystery, Hindu Paper Packet, Bengali Papers, Easy Money Vanisher. It's got a bunch of different names. A few of those, I would think this day and age, would be questionable. I'm not easily offended. And even as a Buddhist, I don't care if it's called Buddha Papers. It doesn't bother me. I just find it interesting that it's had such a long history and some bizarre names. When you're done cutting them, the fold is very important. The yellow, or the two inner ones, whatever colors you use, the first two are doubled. So you fold them together. You mark the center, fold the edges into the center. Find something good. This knife has a nice flat edge. And run those creases really, really thoroughly. I'm not folding it in half. I'm just kind of marking the halfway point. I could use a ruler and measure it, but I'm lazy and this works. It doesn't have to be exactly half. The main thing is the two pages need to be folded the same. So when you unfold it, it looks the same. If one's like folded way off than the other, they may notice. Honestly, they probably wouldn't notice, but let's not give them anything to notice. Press these edges really well. You'll separate these two pages. We'll put it together in a minute. We do the same thing with the others. The red, again, is doubled. Make sure they're straight, corner to corner. You know, don't have them sticking out funny. Make sure they're really together. Fold them. Press them down tight. We will be putting this under a stack of books later to keep it pressed. But you want to really press these down tight. They're going to go back to back. We'll glue them in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and fold the outer two, the single sheets. The, what's in mine is pink and blue. I like using bright colors and alternate the colors so they stand out more. You could do the whole thing with like black, white, and gray, but then it would all just kind of blur into one mess. So I like using the bright colors. And even, I wouldn't usually use pink and red because they're too close, but they're, it's what I have. And I think they're, these stand out well enough. I use a glue stick. I guess you could use regular glue, but you might get weird bubbles and it can, you know, how glue can wrinkle the page a little bit. These, cause you know, they did these long before glue sticks were invented. So any kind of paste or glue will work. Glue sticks are wonderful though. Get the edges and the corners really, really good. The middle, you want glue on it, but it doesn't need massive amounts. The edges and the corners, get them really good. Because when you press these together, you want those seams to not show. If You're not going to stand there and let them see it. Because then you can see that it's two pages glued together. 
but you want to get those as tight as you can so you keep it really straight. The glue stick is nice because it gives you a minute to readjust it if you mess up. I just keep getting glue all over my fingers. Regular white glue would work and you still have a few minutes with that. Once you've got this glued together and the corners and edges, everything straight, I take my flat press which on this again, it's my knife. And press these edges down really, really tight. You want these edges to stay together. Put the whole thing under a book overnight and you are set. It's really a fun trick. It's not going to work on grown-ups, maybe, but it's really fun, and the kids enjoy it. For more detailed instructions and pictures, please visit the blog at freemagicfun.com. Keep practicing.